good afternoon. Good afternoon. And it would be easy. First, give me your Early 90s. 
invite Deacon Lois Myrick uh, to come. She's, she's, I've known her a while. <laughs> I call her Mrs. Myrick because she's our queen. And so, if you'll join us at the lectern, and you're going to need to turn on the mic while she's coming. I'm going to take a little ceremonial license, and uh, the next presenter is going to be not according to your program, but it's going to be um, Ava, Deacon Ava Rodman, who's going to uh, bring us the occasion. Mrs. Myrick. to know there is an eye will mark our coming and look brighter when you come. It is in this spirit that we welcome you, our guests, to this banquet celebrating the 15th anniversary of the way, the truth, and the life of church. We have anticipated your coming with joy, and our eyes being our delight now that you are here. Some of the most beautiful scenes in the gospel are those in which our Lord gathered with his friends about the festival. He was a social person, but he did not use these occasions for social life alone. Some of his greatest teachings were done in such an atmosphere. So we trust the Holy Spirit will sweeten our fellowship with the knowledge of his presence. And may we learn from him the lessons conducive to abundant living, so that when we go our separate ways, all believers will know that we have not only been together with other believers, they will know we have been with the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank 
closing, I would like to share a quote that encapsulates us, our journey and our mission. A church anniversary isn't just a milestone to look back upon, it's a stepping stone to look ahead. Finally, let us all enjoy this celebration and give thanks for our time together in an unbroken communion. May our blessed fellowship of believers continue to grow and thrive under God's grace in their unlimited days to come. Thank you, and may God bless you.
parking lot. I was giving my son, Brad, some paintings to frame for an event at Joshua's school. We showed them to Dr. Janet and she commissioned me to paint her some red birds. Shortly thereafter, she called and gave up her red birds in exchange for these paintings. She gave me free reign to depict Psalm 34, 8, and she reminded me that it was the pastor's anniversary. This painting is to commemorate the 15th anniversary of the way the truth and the life change. He promised me it wouldn't be that hard. <laughs> Some of you are old enough to remember Frank Sinatra. 
He says, regrets, I have a few. So those are my two regrets. And that's it. <laughs> if you turn the page, uh, well, to the right of that, you see the, 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 the notes of a banquet speaker. And I'm sure you've, your eyes have ventured to the right. But you'll see our church's history, both in narration and pictures. I got to tell you something. I'm so glad they left Southwestern Elementary School. <laughs> if y'all never went there, those seats are made for elementary school children. <laughs> I started not to join if they were going to stay there. <laughs> Thank you, Southwestern. <laughs> but what a journey we've had, as Deacon Ava described. And then as you continue to turn the pages, uh, you'll see that uh, there's a tribute to some, a salute to others. You'll see some remembrances of those that have transitioned. You'll see some congratulatory messages and a listing of the 15th anniversary committee. And if you will allow me the privilege, I'd like for the anniversary committee members to stand. Uh, and, and I know what some of you are going to say. Uh, well, haven't y'all been recognized enough? <laughs> no. <laughs> it is my way uh, as chair of saying I love you. And thank you so much for all. Are y'all going to stand? Or did I miss it? <laughs> See, they want to blame all of this on me. So by not standing, they get away. But that's all right. I, I've worked with people like this before. <laughs> and so I thank you, all of you, for what, making, the, making this possible. And now, the prayer of thanksgiving by Deacon Nancy Meyer, who chairs our Ministry of Deacons. And before then, I think it was so long. And then we'll have a blessing of a meal in that order. Good afternoon. It's so lovely to be here, and all of you look so lovely. What a view. What a view, and praise God. Just as King David said in the presence of the whole assembly, generously as this. Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O Lord, God of our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, O oh Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power, to exalt and to give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. And the people of God said, Amen, 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 and Amen. Well, come on, this is a celebratory thing. Why don't we give God his praise? I don't know that this is the day that the Lord has made. We may show you rejoice and be glad in it. I am certainly glad uh, to be here. I just want to certainly recognize uh, Pastor Blackwell, Lady J, and uh, Dr. Janet, and uh, my wife, Angela, who's with me, and uh, I also want to give an acknowledgement to Sister Jean. That was just so cool. How she had my first CD for, for 20 years ago. That was just amazing. Uh, just to all of you, happy anniversary to you. Uh, 15 years is a, is a milestone, and it's a blessing from my Lord. So let's do, I want to do an A and B song. I'm going to do uh, uh, 
uh, This Is The Day. I want you to join with me on that. And, um, and then a song, um, How Great Is Our God.
we are waiting to see the faces of those who will. Maybe they think I really forgot the day, but anyway, <laughs> I'm sure they'll, they're on time. All right, Tim, we come. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I always so, feel so blessed to be able to greet my church family. Yeah. Trustee Jen, Dr. Jen McKenzie, I hope you don't mind if I take a little liberty here. You got the mic. Anybody who has ever learned to play an instrument, learned to sing, understands what it takes to study that craft, to perfect those skills. And when you are blessed by God with those gifts, and you return those gifts back to him as one of the praise using our instruments. Uh, that you called upon uh, 
and uh, we see this every every day. It's not just Sunday. Uh, it's not just Wednesday night Bible study. It's not just a call. Now, can I tell y'all something? Say yes. yes. <laughs> he calls my mother every night. Now on Thursday night, Sheldon comes on at eight o'clock. <laughs> We can watch that together. And as soon as we sit down and the show gets good, the phone rings. I said, no, ask that. You know who it is. She said, oh, I have to answer that. Oh, come on, folks. Come on. Yes, please. We're just having a good time here. We don't even give each other presents anymore. We just 
talk about the angel today. We talk about the angel who's purchasing the gift and the angels who will be receiving those gifts and the angels who will be singing on high that we gave to someone uh, that they needed a touch from us. So do that for me. And, and then as you depart, uh, this afternoon, we've got a special gift for you. Uh, it's, it's, it's a red little gift bag, and we're going to have our uh, hospitality committee assist you, so don't forget your gift on the way out. And so I'm thinking to myself, I can stop right here on the program. People are making progress. My bill is here. The head table is waiting. Looks like they're waiting for me. Uh, in fact, one of them pulling my coat like this, y'all.
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Giving praises to God. Honoring Pastor John T. Blackwell II, First Lady John T. Blackwell, my lady Jay, Reverend Hines, Reverend Eric Harbour, my love, to all of the clergy that are present here, watch your peace, to the officers, the members, to all assembled in this space and this place, I say to you, grace and peace. Amen. Amen. Great day to you all, my brothers and sisters in Christ. It is my humble honor to be before you as Pastor John and the Way, the Truth, and the Life Church celebrate 15 years in ministry, serving the Lord and his people. I am always humbled when someone asks a little old girl like me from Brooklyn to stand before God's children to share what he has shared with me to share with you. If we can, for a brief moment, Father God, we come and we are here in your presence to say thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done and continue to do, how you have gathered us in this space and in this place to celebrate you first, Lord God, and then to celebrate the work that you have done through the way, the truth, and the life church through Pastor Blackwell. Lord God, have your way, continue to move in this celebration and in this occasion, Lord God. Lord God, I decrease as you increase always in my life. The table is set, we are ready to eat. Feed us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 The theme being celebrating a great God. Yes. But I wanna put an underscore under there and say the journey to great. The journey to great. The theme, celebrating a great God. We all should be able to connect with this declaration. It should make us reflect and do what the song says. Everybody know that song? You heard that song, the lyrics are, think about his love, think about his goodness, think about his that brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. When you think about it, what comes to mind when you think about the greatness and the goodness of God? Does it make your heart flutter? Does it make your heart smile? Do you feel joy in your soul when you think about the greatness of God? So we're here to celebrate, right? Yes. So when we hear the word celebrate, what comes to mind? What do you think about? We celebrate, that's right, hey, we party <laughs> We celebrate so many things throughout this life's journey. We celebrate holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, baby showers, graduations, promotions, and we even celebrate when a soul transitions from this life to the next. What a wonderful occasion and time to Pause, reflect, and think about celebrating a great God. Specifically talking to the way that the truth and life church. When you think about the journey, when you think about whenever you entered into this ministry, and to think about the greatness and the goodness of God. My family entered into this journey through my Aunt Barbara, Barbara Couch. And I do recall being at one of those schools, I can't remember which one, but I remember we visited you all when you were at the school. And then our journey brought us to my mother becoming a member of the way. And I remember being at the hotel. 
<laughs> and I think about the greatness and the goodness of God and how Holy Spirit came all the way up, 13, <laughs> through the New Jersey Turnpike, over the Staten Island Bridge, the Verrazano Bridge, to that place in Brooklyn called Crown Heights to tap a woman named Elaine Couch Hines to come in partnership and fellowship with such a great body of believers. Yeah. That some may think that they can't find a church in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> they gotta connect all the way in Virginia, and that is to show you how great this body of believers is. How great God is. That the tissues of the Spirit connected and brought us along on this journey with, uh, with you. And then for my husband now to become a member of the way. And now we're in your new edifice to continue the celebration. Hallelujah. So, the theme scripture here we sit in Psalm 34, verse 8. And just to look back a little bit on why David penned this psalm. David's penned this psalm. It's one of these individual hymns of thanksgiving. And when we sit in thanksgiving, we sit in gratitude. And when we sit in gratitude, we sit in greatness, right? And that David sang on this occasion of the deliverance of his life by God that we gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ because he delivered us. Ah, is it a great God? That he found us somewhere, wherever we were. And he said, let me get my child and bring them to the way, the truth, and the life church, or wherever we are affiliated. So here David is in thanksgiving for God saving his life. But in particular, Psalm 34 and 8, David praises the Lord for delivering him from the Philistines and invites others to join him in singing joyfully to the Lord. He extols the Lord. He praises him enthusiastically. The virtue of fearing the Lord and remembering God's goodness. He encourages the Lord's people to respect God and offers wisdom leading to a long and blessed life. As we sit in this space, and I think of a woman that's sitting over here, Sister Lois Myron, blessed with a long life. to show us the greatness and the goodness of God. Blessed to show us how to continue on the journey through life's ups and downs and still give him praise. Hallelujah. Even though David was running for his life, he was on a journey to great. And he had to pause in this verse 8, in my mind, to celebrate greatness, to celebrate the vastness of God, and to express gratitude for how God protected him. His journey to great. What made him great? Just a few things. Little great little shepherd boy, tending to his own business, running his business, he wasn't called to be anointed, and gets anointed. Yes. Then he defeats a giant. Then he becomes, he builds a small empire. Then he conquers Jerusalem. And then he defeats the Philistines. And then he's Israel's second king. And all the things in between was his journey to great. David's personal faith in God was enough to carry the nation into victory. Pastor John's faith in God is enough to carry us into victory, into winning souls to Christ, into being a light in the community. David's personal faith carried him. His faith was strong, admitted intimidation, doubt, unbelief, sinfulness, because we a lot of times sit in David's sinfulness, but in all of that, he had a personal faith 
in God. So he had to pause in Psalm 34 to give God great praise. Right. To give his great God a great praise. I love verses 1 through 3 in Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. It is a perfect way to celebrate a great God. David is showing us that this celebration is continuous. It comes from the soul, the inner parts of us that is connected to God through his ruach, his spirit, his breath, the living source of who we are, the humbleness of our worship and praise of our great God should give us joy. And then we as a community come together to exalt him and to lift his name in celebration. So can you with me join in saying, Great God, great praise. Great God, great praise. Great God, great praise. So how do we celebrate a great God? It's simple. We do it. We just have to remember that we are doing it. We acknowledge that he is God. Yep, we wake up in the morning and we honor him for who he is. Thank you, Lord. We honor you. You're a great God. We praise his great and holy name. We spread love and message wherever our path takes us. We pray to him consistently and without ceasing. This is how we celebrate a great God. We study his holy word daily. We worship him with our whole hearts and being. And then we reflect on the journey he has carried us through. Count our many blessings and name them one by one. Celebrating a great God, the journey to great, a great God creates great people. So take a minute to look at somebody at your table. All right, yeah. You are in the presence of great people. All right, yeah. <laughs> you are in the presence of what God created. Our great God created great people. Those who seek him, his wisdom, hear his voice, and follow his path are his great people. I leave you with one point. And it's a simple one. The simple point is celebrate the journey. That's it. Celebrate the journey. Take a moment and grab something into your mind that God has done for you. Some great thing that he's done for you. And celebrate the journey.
This is the teacher in me now. <laughs> Once upon a time, <laughs> there was this man that was journeying through life content with the life he was living and the service he was giving up to God. Then one day, there was a knock on his heart. It was a great God calling him deeper into service. He pondered, he wondered what this great God wanted to do with his life. As he continued to carry out his life's responsibilities, the intensity of the great God's call became so great that he could not ignore it. The ember in his heart became a burning flame. He could no longer hide what the great God said to him. So he had to eventually share with his wife what was happening in his heart, mind, body, and soul. All right. This man finally surrendered to the call over his life, trusting God totally with the process of how, what, why, and when. He gathered in his family, dearest friends and loved ones to begin a journey that only a great God could orchestrate. Listening to the voice of a great God, he moved to the beat of the Holy Spirit, studying, praying, teaching, worshiping, advising, guiding, and loving people all along the way. A great God took a great man and gathered some great people to show the way, teach the truth, and strive to live the life. A great God took a great man to touch the souls of people near and far. As his journey continues, 15 years later, the way, the truth, and the life church will continue to worship and praise a great God happily forever and ever. Amen.
but then he blessed us tonight. Found out a little 
little later, after she was there, that she told Sister Barbara, you know, you haven't, you haven't joined the church yet, but you better join that church. <laughs> and, um, and so she did, you know. And a year later, I had talked to Sister Elaine from time to time, but a year later, I got a call saying that she was coming down to join our church uh, in the way. And uh, I told her, I said, Sister Elaine, some churches in New York. <laughs> yeah, but I like that church. I like that church. And we didn't have a church building. We just uh, we were at the hotel at that particular time. So we got a call. She was coming down to join. And she came down from Brooklyn and joined our church. She, she, she certainly did. And uh, she just blessed us to know that she would come down and join our church in Portsmouth when all those other churches were there. And she said, this is the church for me. And so her and Sister Bo, uh, as a result of that, I met Minister Gillian. She was not a minister at the time. She was a principal school up in Brooklyn. And uh, she's a lady that does not allow any grass to grow under her feet because she is constantly on the move, doing all kinds of fantastic things. Can you imagine being a teacher Vice, uh, vice principal and then a principal. And then after you retire, work from working at the school board, God calls you to preach, and then you turn around and go to seminary. She did all of that. And she was a license, she was not ordained. And uh, no, she's licensed, not ordained yet. But, uh, but yeah, we're going <laughs> And so as a result of her, and she just blessed us. I mean, you know, there was, the whole family has just blessed us. And uh, her husband, uh, got a chance to meet him. And uh, we found out God had called him. And he had been supporting our church for quite a while, three years or so. And then he called and said, you know, I want to join the church. I want to join the church as well. And so he came and he joined our church. And last month he was he was licensed to be a minister. Right. And so we're just blessed. God just sending all, all so many people from different parts of the country, believe it or not. We have members in, in New York, we have members in other parts of the state and uh, as well. And they listen every Sunday on on um, on the line and on the computer and to worship with us. And they are so faithful. And so we're just so blessed, so blessed. But I just want to tell you that Sister Gillian did a wonderful, wonderful job for us tonight. So celebrating the journey. And that is so important. Toward heaven. Yes. Every day it gets shorter and shorter. And a lot of times we do deal with problems and issues in our lives while we're here. We just want to, you know, get past that. But God doesn't, God wants to enjoy every day of our lives. So many wonderful things, wonderful things that we can do. How we can bless people, how we can love people. When you at the end of the journey, yes, we are in heaven, but that's the end. And that's a wonderful end of course. But he needs us as we move forward to help and to carry others along with us and tell them why it's so important to be saved. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's a powerful, powerful message he gave us, yeah. celebrating the journey. Yeah. And that's what we want to do. And that's what we're doing in the way. Jesus said in 14, 6, uh, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so we say at our church, we're showing the way, we're teaching the truth, and striving to live the life. We're not there yet, but we're striving. We're going to enjoy the journey along the way. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being here. And I want to talk about my wife. <laughs>
Yeah, I do want to get in the house. You're right. You're right. I cannot leave here without telling you, first of all, how much I love my wife. And we have been married 54 years.